Hello, everybody, and welcome to the fine art of pricing, how to master one of the toughest small business challenges. With Marley Major, that would be me, and Angela Prophet. Miss Angela, are you there? I'm here. Can you hear me? Sort of. We need you to uh, maybe talk a little bit closer to the mic. Gotcha. Let me turn it around. Can you hear me better now? Perfect. And if we could have one of the attendees or somebody raise their hand and let us know if you can see our screen, just so that we're in good shape. That would be fabulous. Yay, okay. So we can see our screen. Awesome. Okay, everybody. Well, welcome to the fine art of pricing. Angela and I are ready to dive in. What a week. We have had, um, I love that the first person that answered the question, or that, that raised their hand, um, at least is signed up as a, as a gentleman. So I, I think that's awesome since, so I guess there's one guy in the whole world I haven't offended with my um, email campaign, which is good news, Angela. Okay, so we're going to talk about how to stop cutting your prices without spending a ton of time. So basically our goals for you um, during this webinar are to, to teach you how to charge what you're worth, uh, to give you energy so you're not totally run down and depressed feeding your business, and so that you've got confidence that you're pricing right. Because one of the things that Angela and I have really been drilling down on is where are you getting stuck? And when we look at where you're getting stuck, and, and when you signed up for the webinar, we got you know, you have to fill in what's your top pricing challenge. And it was amazing because, ev I mean, I cannot even tell you how overwhelming it was that people are, just don't have the confidence that they're doing it right. And they're like, well, I'm not sure. I'm afraid of that my competition is charging this. So what we did with this webinar is we really tried to tailor that to exactly the to the audience you guys and uh, really craft our message so that we can help you the best which is why we ask this question so I don't want you just to think that you just use them we actually make it work and put it together okay so if you stay till the end we will tell you exactly how to nail your pricing and save a ton of time in the process because uh, I don't think there's anybody else out there who is dying to spend more time on their business than they have. All right, so what makes this different? Angela, why don't you jump in and tell us a little bit about your background and why this webinar is different than other webinars other people can attend? Well, my background is in psychology, and so my entire event planning company's background is run off of a psychology methodology. And I actually loved it so much that I went to their school and became certified as a facilitator to teach it. And since then, I have become a productivity fiend in making sure that our businesses run very effectively and efficiency by being paperless and then being a really good communicator. I love it. Well, yes, you're a very good communicator, and there's no question every time I talk to you that you have a background in psychology, like when I'm freaking out, going, Angela, oh, my gosh. <laughs> We've just got this hate mail about whatever, and you're like, oh, that's okay. Oh, but we have it. to customize the message and make sure right. we are um, effectively communicating with all types of personalities. Exactly, and that's why you're so cheerful and you're not getting the hate mail. No, I'm getting <laughs> all right, so what makes this different from my perspective is that I got my business degree from Georgetown and I had my first seven figure business by the time I was 22. But the thing is, is that even though I had all that training and background, I still didn't know, I, I just couldn't figure out my pricing. And, and what's amazing to me is, is again, going through, I think how many pages do I have in front of me? Literally they're in front of me. I think 12 pages, 12 single spaced pages, just a lot of data on everybody's pricing challenges and it's kind of nice actually because for so long I could not figure out how to price in fact I was really focused on my my sales number which a lot of us are focused on it's like oh I want to do this amount of business this month but we don't take the time to figure out exactly how to price and so I was so challenged that the only way I would stick to it is if I wrote a book and like basically put it out there publicly and then I 
made myself have to stick to it. So, Angela, tell us about the things that you did right. Well, I went to college at UT Knoxville, just like my parents told me to, and graduated, but I hated school. Couldn't wait to get out, finished early. Um, but the main thing that I did right is I joined professional networking organizations. So once I decided that I was really going to make this a business and not do it just for fun or on the side for extra money, it was actually going to be a real business. That's one of the most powerful things that I did is I really surrounded myself with people who were smarter than me and better than me, who could teach and train and really bring me up in the industry. And then after doing that for years and years and then quitting my real job that was in healthcare that was bringing in stable money, as I would call it, um, I really had to learn how to customize the pricing message based on people's personality so that I could gauge my my numbers and how many events that we wanted to do and how many events we needed to do each month to become profitable. So learning that recipe was really important for communication and profitability. I think that's cool. And, and that's one of the things that we're going to be talking a lot more today is about that recipe. Because I loved when, when you and I were prepping for this webinar. And I'm not sure people realize how much, speaking of like, you know, time and, and energy we put into our businesses, how much time you and I put into the content for this. And it's really because we both, I think, love to do it, but we are kind of always looking for like the better or clearer way to explain to people how we, how, you know, what it is. And I think we're going to drill down on this even more, but you talked about, hey, listen, creating this like framework and then like customizing the recipe. And that's what we all need is we all need to start with this framework and then, you know, we customize the recipe. So, I think that's um, such a good way to put it. Now, I did a lot of things right. I graduated from a top school. I, I worked on my businesses 24 hours a day. Ironically, um, you know, you know, while birthing three kids. Ironically, today is my oldest 21st birthday. So I'm doing this webinar from New York, which so you can probably hear the honking in the background. And um, you know, boy, when you, I, I mean, I had a tear in my eye more than once yesterday as I was kind of nostalgic thinking wow he was a year old like but first of all he was, I was pregnant the whole time I was working in the restaurant uh, and then obviously had him and those are the days of growing up in front of the cappuccino machine because it was noisy and it was it was a free babysitter and I thought gosh how far I've come from those days of being such the young mom and not having a freaking clue I just remember being so stressed out all the time uh, and then I and then I wrote a book to solve my own problems and and hopefully to help other people and and my sweet spot is is pricing and yours is productivity and they obviously so go hand in hand. So Angela, tell us a couple of things that you did wrong. And I, the reason I think this is so important to emphasize is because as entrepreneurs and small business owners, we feel we spend so much time feeling alone and. Like we're the only ones that have ever messed it up, or we're the only ones who are worried about how much our competition is charging. You know, I worry still about how much my competition is charging, and you know, I'm the one doing the webinar with you. So, tell me, kind of, some of the things that that you've done wrong so people don't feel alone. Well, the first thing is I did not track my time, and so when someone said, how much do you charge to plan an event, or how much do you charge to speak, or how much do you charge for this, you know, when I had a, a real job, as my parents would call it, um, I didn't need the money, and so it didn't matter. I would just pull a number out of my butt because that's what I heard so-and-so was charging, and they did packages. Well, after I made this my full-time business, and I was committed to making sure we were profitable... I hired several coaches, an accountant, a business manager who, who made me track everything. And it was very painful, but it taught me so much about my business. And now I just don't pull a number out of the sky. It actually means something. And I didn't really have a process. Like I would let my clients tell me how they wanted me to plan their event, which it was never good. Um, right. And now I use templates and I didn't hire the right people. I used my friends and my family and they really were not looking to be in the industry I was in. And so using a methodology to actually hire the right people has made all the difference in the world. And I think that if one of the things that we can 
really underscore is taking the time to, and then fill in the blank, taking the time to set up our pricing, taking the time to hire the right people. And it isn't about not just rushing. It's about, I go back to that piece of having a system. And it's, it's just, it's literally the difference between making money and not making money. And I mean, it's amazing that I could limit what I did wrong to, to three points on a PowerPoint screen because, Lord, I feel like there are about 4,000 things I did wrong. But I was focused on sales instead of profit, and what we all have to get into our heads is the number that matters is how much we take home, how much is left at the end of the day. I didn't have a system. Keep talking about that. And, and really the other thing that I wanted to emphasize today is that I spent a lot of time beating myself up, which was a real waste of time. I mean, it served a purpose to a point because it gets you off the dime. But then there's the point where we have to stop whining and we have to really just get off our duffs and actually get it done. You know, we have to actually make a change. So I think it's amazing. In fact, you forwarded me an email. I won't say the, the name of the person, but it's, a, it's an amazing marketer out there. And he was like, hey, listen, most people watch all these different shows and they do nothing about it. You know, they don't they don't take the action. And that's the difference is, is you've got to get off these calls and you actually have to do something differently than you're doing right now. So after doing this for a few years, you know, we, we just, I think both of us kept reinventing the wheel every time we, we had a client. We worked with every client who called, we felt bad, we took chances. It was like we just didn't have a plan. We didn't have that recipe. And so that's what we're going to go over today is that recipe. And we went, we figured this out the hard way, which is how most entrepreneurs figure it out, which is trial and error. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to, to let you cheat and give you the easier way because the hard way is not a ton of fun. So the hard way, uh, anybody raise your hand, why not, if you feel like you're doing it the hard way. The hard way is not creating that system start to finish. And, and, and it goes from the minute the client calls to the minute you hang up the phone and you know say thanks so much for the event or whatever service or product you're providing. You cannot treat every call like it's unique. You just, you can't, and, and you, you can't start from scratch every time either, but the only way that you can get out of that sort of loop is by sitting down and literally scripting out your process, and that's what I do, and I know you do with your private clients, is we literally sit and go start to finish. Now, the other thing, too, is the hard way is, is feeling badly. I mean, we, all of us have been in the same boat. Now, the easy way obviously saves a lot of time and money. It's kind of like, hey, listen, you can figure out how to, you know, ride a bicycle without anybody showing you. It's going to take a really long time. The easier way is just to have somebody show you how to do it. And so that's what we want to do. So in the past, we started from scratch every single time, and now we really have templates and procedures for everything. Now, we want to make sure that we give you our disclaimer because we are both offering guidance based on our experiences. We can't promise you're going to get this. And we're providing tools that have helped us and we hope will help you. So we wanted to talk about the four ways to master the fine art of pricing. And here is how you do it. We're going to show you how to set your pricing and feel good about it without overcharging. We want to show you how to appropriately handle the competition when they keep undercutting you. Get your prospective clients to understand the ginormous amount of time that you put in. And that was the other thing that I was really struck with when, when reviewing the, um, the feedback from not only this webinar when people signed up, but from the last one. It was amazing because I cannot tell you again how many times people said, wow, you know, I, I, people just don't understand how much time I put in. So we're going to talk to you about that. In fact, we're going to include an ad that, um, I just saw on TV that I was like, oh my God, they do a brilliant job of it. And then we're going to show you how to stick to your pricing so that you don't give in. And then we're going to show you how to implement it. So the four ultimate secrets to the art of pricing. And secret number one is set your pricing for your market and feel good about it without overcharging. And I, it was amazing out of the hun literally hundreds and hundreds of people who signed up for this webinar, how many 
I mean, I like had I was just struck by nobody wants to overcharge. Nobody wanted to gouge the client. It was it was amazing. But unfortunately, what's happening is a lot of us are doing the opposite. So let's talk about secret number one, um, Angela. I I think if I started with this piece, I would say that that you have to determine what the customer values, and that seems so simple, right? I mean. But there's there's a reason why like I checked into a hotel to be here in New York. Why everywhere you go you have a survey. It's like how was our room? How was our service? How was this? You know you go, you look at TripAdvisor. You look at um, everything. Like if you don't get a receipt, your your deal is free. You fill out how your customer service was, and you really the only way to do that is to ask your customers and consistently ask for them. And then here's the thing. And this is seems very simple, but we don't want to miss this is you then have to go for that customer because you can say all event planning clients let's say oh they all want the same thing no they don't uh, or you can say all people who are going to hire me to be an interior designer all want the same thing no they don't and there are different segments of the market within certain industries and you really have to ask the people in your area so in the and the feedback we got and my little 12 pages worth of feedback over and over it said for my area for my market how do I know how to price for my market well how you know is that you talk to the customer because in different areas uh, you might charge hourly or you might charge a flat fee or you might phrase how your product pricing is in a certain way but you really have to figure out what is the best way that that your customer wants to see your pricing because it does make all the difference. Angela, talk a little bit about the, the pieces that make you unique and why that's important and then and then give everybody examples because I think we learn best with examples so give everybody examples of how you do it. Well, I well you hit it on the head by saying not every person wants the same thing when they come to us for planning an event or a wedding you know, every bride needs a dress and every bride needs a photographer and you think the, everybody wants the same thing, but, but they don't at all. And so asking clarifying questions on what's important to them before they jump and say, well, how much do you cost? Because usually yeah. that's what they want to know. And I tell them, I have to understand what you think you want and then I can give you a proposal, but I can't just tell you what it's going to cost until I understand what you think you need. And what sets us apart from a lot of other organizations is we're completely paperless and we use psychology to ensure that your experience, your family's experience, your guest experience is exceeding your expectations or at least meeting your expectations. And I have to understand what they want before I can give them a, a quote. So those are the two things that make us different, the paperless and the psychology. Um that really, really make us unique. And then also probably the third thing is we we say it's money back guaranteed that if you're not happy with something, I'll give you your money back because I don't want you to be miserable in the process. And, you know, we can't make everybody happy, but, but we never really run into that. So when you guarantee your work and you stand behind it and you're 100% confident in what you're offering, um, how can they say no? Because you're offering their money back if they're not happy. We do charge um, hourly, and so we bill monthly. So it's not like I'm going to give them their money back going nine months into it. But if they're right. not happy with something, we stand behind our product and the experience. And and for people who who that makes them nervous, like some people say, "Oh my gosh, like I'm going to work all this time." And but I think really to underscore is what you're saying is that you don't go through the whole process. So in your case, you're providing a service and you're going along so as you go along they don't get to use up the nine months let's say of planning time or I mean and, and people can apply this to, to their particular businesses but they've got it they, they can fish or cut bait at any point and really how many times have you had to refund somebody's money never isn't that interesting and so and, and the other thing too is like you and I, whenever we do our coaching stuff, like we've done the last times, and and I just, in fact, put a product up, and every time, it's like we give a money-back guarantee, because here's the thing. We totally believe, just like you totally believe in your 
in, in the service you're providing, we completely believe in our products and what we're selling. It's and and we're it's like if you're not happy, run along, no problem. Like we're sorry it, it didn't work or we didn't meet your expectations. But it goes a long way to encouraging people who are on the fence about choosing you over your competition to know, well, if I don't like it, I can return it because that doesn't really happen very often. And oh, by the way, it's one of those things where the people who are giving money back guarantees are usually not people you have to worry about, right? Because we're the ones that are like, hey, no problem, move on, like we want a better fit. Um, and then I kind of put the, the salad dressing piece and we talked about the recipe. And my version of your creating the pricing strategy is that you create like the framework. Like I, I went to cooking school for the first time when I was 19 in France. And one of the things that they do is you, you, know, you learn all these basic things. You learn all these basic sauces and how everything, how you know, certain sauces are at the root of all these different cuisines. And then you kind of add to them. And I was like, okay, so if I'm going to have a Caesar salad, guess what? I'm going to add anchovy paste. And if I'm going to have this kind of salad, you're going you're gonna to tweak the ingredients. But at the end of the day, you have the same com the same components. You just are tweaking, really tweaking the details, and that's sort of what what we're doing in business in terms of our pricing. So, what's your take on it? Well, again, having a strategy is the framework of our entire company. So, when someone comes to us and says, "Can you mail me your menu of services, and can you print off our guest list, and can you?" do all of this, you know, I very quickly say our strategy and our process is completely paperless. It's the safest way. We make sure that everything is backed up and you securely have access to everything that we have access to. So at any point in given time, you can log into your Dropbox or to your Google Drive and make sure that whatever you need to see is there. It really cuts down on emails, just a little sidebar. But knowing our strategy and, and sharing the process with the, the clients or a potential client shows them how, hey, we have it together. And if you don't like the paperless process, because we're not going to print and mail stuff to you, we're probably not a good fit for you because we're not going to change it because we've been doing it for five over five years now. And we know that it works. Right. And I, I would venture to say if somebody said, hey, listen, I'm going to pay you a million dollars to change your system. Well, that's that's a different case. But, you know, it's it's just you've got your system down and and that's the value you provide to your to your customer. Now, if we jump to secret number two is how to appropriately handle the co competition when they keep undercutting you. I mean, I and I know I keep referring to these results that you guys turned in with these surveys or with the questions that we're asking you. But oh, by the way, hint, remember the very first thing on, on secret number one about the slides is we said you've got to ask your customers, like ask them what they want. Guess what? What did we do for the webinars? And, and we keep exceeding our numbers. Every webinar we do now, we're getting more and more and more people to sign up. And I believe, well, I think we, we deliver a good presentation, but hopefully, but it's because we're asking the questions. And so the thing that kept coming up is my competition keeps lowballing me. What do I do? Or I charge this, I'm barely making enough as it is, and then the guy down the street is charging $500 less. What do we do? Well, I want to jump in with people undercut you for two reasons. First of all, half the time, I'm not even sure they know they're undercutting you, but it, but when they do, it's for one of two reasons, and, and I think one of two reasons only. I'd love it if somebody comes up with another reason, put it in the message box to us, because um, we're, we're both can see that on the screen with your questions or when you raise your hand. But people undercut because lack of knowledge and lack of confidence, period. The reason I say that is, is look at a, a brand like Chanel or Colin Cowie, or at no point is Colin Cowie cutting his prices. I mean, it just does not happen because he's confident that there's that he, he knows what he's doing. He's got the business. And for those of you who aren't aren't event planners, because we've you know we've opened this up to, to all entrepreneurs and small business owners, Colin Cowie's a very successful um, wedding and event planner. And the point is is that he knows he's good at what he does. He's at the top of his game. He's fresh, his ideas are fresh and he provides a great 
product and a great service. Another one is Chanel, and I've used this example before, but I was in Paris a few years ago, and I literally could not believe my eyes. I mean, there was a line outside of Chanel, like around the corner, and these people are very patiently on their phones waiting for the line. And it was just like, literally, are they having a sale? Well, no, it was the exact opposite. They, they weren't discounting anything. It was just these people wanted what Chanel had to offer. They had built up this, this demand. But did Chanel go into it blindly and just say, hey, listen, we're just going to design this stuff? No, because most people, we, what we do is we build our businesses backwards. And so you don't need to, under, you don't need to, to lower your prices when you are sure what your customers want. And you know that based on asking them. So jump in, Angela, because you have very strong opinions, which I love about why people undercut and, and what you do about it. Well, I, th th this is sad, but sickly, when someone challenges me and they say, well, I've met with seven planners, and this really happened not too long ago, and, um, and you're, you seem to be the most expensive because when we add up how many hours we think you need, we need you, we're going to spend the most money with you. And I say, well, um, how was your experience with, with those other seven planners? I mean, I'm number eight. And they said, well, you came highly recommended to us. Two of our friends have used you. And I said, and what was the experience? Obviously, the first seven that you've met with are not providing the experience you're looking for or that your friends have shared with you because those seven people don't follow the strategy that we use. And so if you're looking for an experience that's completely custom and unique to your personality based on the psychology, and if you're looking for someone who is 100% confident in their product, and I'll give you your money back if you're not happy after your wedding, then I'm your girl. But if you don't value the experience, you want everything to be the same, you want the same process that everybody expects when they walk into a wedding, then I'm probably not the person for you. So I completely focus on, and, and you notice I never say anything about the other people because we're all we're all different. We all bring different things to the table. And so I love when I'm challenged because they're, they're not, they're there because they haven't found what they're looking for yet. And typically I can figure out what they want and build a vision in their head, like psychologically, so that when they leave the office, they feel good about it. They feel confident about it. And Hey, if they're not happy, we'll give them their money back. But that usually is never the case. And once they've gone through the entire experience, they then understand the value that we bring to the table. Sure, we save them a lot of money and a lot of stress because we steer them and educate them through the entire process where some other planners don't always educate their clients as they're going through the process from a psychological standpoint. And before we jump into the piece about about getting your hourly rate so that you so that you really can deal with the competition, um, we have a we have a comment. Kimberly made a comment and said, "Listen, Colin is already through the door, and I'm I'm trying to basically get the door open." And how so, Angela? How would you address that? How would you say, "Okay, listen, somebody who's already established." And yes, I have an example of two established brands, but in my opinion, it still boils down to asking the customer what they want and not building our businesses backwards. Not just hanging out our shingle saying hey, guess what, this is the service I provide. But instead, coming up with what specifically they want that the marketplace is not providing. Like my, my dad growing up would say, find a need and fill it. Find a need and fill it. Find a need and fill it. I was so sick of that like phrase. But it does have to start with a need. We can have a, we can have a whole webinar about you know creating need, but that's different. But you've got, they have to have a need for what you want. And, and I would argue, because listen, you and I have both been at the place of, of starting out. In fact, um, you and I have both launched brand new segments of our businesses over, over the course of time. And I mean, I'm in the midst of that exactly right now. I'm going up against huge players for, for, for a business segment that I'm doing that have been around for a million years and I'm brand new at it and I'm fumbling around with my pricing just like you all are but I'm using exactly these same things that I'm teaching you and it starts with asking whether it's 
your the local vendors like the, the if you're a planner doing this you know talking to the stationary girls and say listen what do people want you know or even taking out a Google ad to a survey or um, creating a focus group even if those focus groups are just with you know friends and family that's how you get the ideas to do that what would you suggest to somebody who's who's like trying to get their foot in the door and then sh and then show people well it even, you know, when I think back to when I started, the root and the heart of what I was doing for people is, A, I was passionate about it, and I was excited about gaining their business and their trust. And so if you show your passion and excitement, even when you are new, that's okay. You might feel you get a little bit taken advantage of, but that's what helped me build my brand is when someone asked me to do something and I didn't know how to do it. I was very honest and I said, you know what? I've never planned an Indian, Indian wedding before, but tell me what you want and teach me about your culture. I want to learn about it and I want you to be happy. And so that was 10 plus years ago. And now we do lots of Indian weddings, but just be honest and upfront with people. If you've never done something, I was a yes girl and I would figure it out and I would make sure that my clients are happy. And if they're not happy, I want to figure out why they're not happy and try to fix it. Now, there are people who they're, you're not going to make everybody happy, but my goal was to try to make people happy, even when I was new, which helped build a really good foundation of being trustworthy. So I would follow up, I would follow through, and I would always close the loop on communication. And I think that that's what really built trust in my clients. And, and another thing you just gave me a good idea is talking about building trust, because people do business with people for three reasons. Know, like, and trust, period. If they don't know you, obviously they can't hire you. If they don't trust you, they are not going to hire you unless you're the only person selling water in the desert. Uh, and, and they have to like you. And there are a million ways to, 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 to communicate that, whether it's having a blog or your Facebook personality or whatever. But the easiest way to get in the door, and let me tell you, the door is wide open, and I know this for a fact, um, because of so much data that's out there because of my own secret shopping to get your foot in the door you follow up fast 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 the, the the thing about bigger companies is they can't follow up usually as fast as you can and make it easy for the customer to contact you with it like with, whether it's an intake form um, follow up immediately I cannot tell you how much business I have scooped up just just by being fast and on it. So that's my big tip. And when we talk about figuring out about the, this whole piece about how to handle the competition, the, the key thing, I think, is you have to determine your hourly rate. And, and those of you who have been on calls like this have heard me beat this drum before. But how do you do that? You've got to figure out what your hourly rate is. And first, I say to you, listen, how much do you want to make an hour? And some people, everybody's got a different number. My number seems to go up by the minute. Um, but you have an, an hourly rate that you're like, I feel good about making this. Now, if, if you said to my 21-year-old, how much do you want to make an hour? And he, you know, he'd be happy with 20 bucks an hour. I would cry if I were making $20 an hour. But most of us are making a lot less than $20 an hour because we haven't taken the time to really create that pricing recipe and figure out what our clients want and then how we are going to service that business meaning with the appropriate amount of time. So first say how much time, how much do you want to make an hour, and then next you've got to decide your walk away point, okay? That's your hourly rate where you just say I'm not going to do it no matter what. And we're going to talk more about that too when we get into the whole recipe piece. But you can say your goal is $100 an hour, and that means whether you're emailing or typing or driving or doing any aspect of your business, but then you've got a walk away number. So, for example, in January, at least for the event side, we're not particularly busy. So I might say, hey, listen, I want to make $100 an hour. It's, I want to make more, but let's just use that as a round number. But let's say in January, I might be fine making $70 an hour because I don't have that much else going on. So you've got to determine those two numbers because only can you determine those two numbers can you feel good about, your, about the price that you're charging. Now, let's go to secret three, um, getting prospective clients to understand the enormous amount of time you put in and the value you provide. So, so let's jump into this, Angela. I mean, um, I started with ex 
expect the pushback. And I think that might be one of the biggest myths is that people think like, oh, just because uh, you know we've been around a while, we don't get as much pushback. Well, maybe we don't get as many challenges because we've earned our stripes in terms of that point. But I'll tell you right now, just about every client, I get some form of pushback. And the the when you whether it's you dealing with a very high end clientele like in the luxury market. I'll tell you, they're pushing back too. They didn't get rich because they're not good with money. I mean, some of them might be trust fund or whatever, but for the most part, they've got money for a reason. They're not stupid. And so, and and also, by the way, there's nothing wrong with pushing back. I mean, I push back. I'm like, really, why did why was I charged X, Y, Z? It doesn't mean I'm not going to pay it. It just means I need to understand it. So, jump in on the on the whole piece about how we start getting clients to understand how much it is we charge well, and why. Whenever people, well, again, our business model is very different. So when people find out we charge hourly, I try to put a very positive spin on it and saying we don't do packages because we want to only charge you what you're needed. So some people, you know, in an event for a corporate event or a wedding, if they have a seating chart, if they have escort cards, place cards, menu cards, that's going to take a whole lot longer than somebody that just wants a cocktail party. So right. that's one thing that I really try to sell them on is we're not charging you anything for a package. Um, and yeah, I mean, we get pushed back all the time. But again, I really focus on our strategy and what we offer and tell them the experience that we're going to create for them instead of focusing so much on the bottom line do dollar. And again, if someone's trying to gouge me on pricing and get me to commit to a certain fee, I've done it. I've had client remorse, just like people have buyer's remorse, and I will never do it again. You learn those things the hard way. And what really stuck it to me is about three years ago when my accountant and my business manager sat me down and showed me how many weddings that I paid people to do for them. Which right. means after I paid my staff and my overhead, I made zero dollars profit and I paid to do those things for people for free. And that that's really when I woke up and said, OK, what do I have to do? What's our monthly expenses? How many people are we paying? What is our overhead and what do I need to make to make sure that I'm making a profit as a as the business owner in order to live a comfortable life. And that's the number that we need to come up with. And it changes every year. We reassess as we grow and as we change our focus and build our brand, we're constantly assessing it and tracking it. I can't say it enough. You've got to track what you're doing in order to be profitable. I love that. And the next piece of homework that everybody has is, is you, you do have to know what your competition is charging, in my opinion. I mean, some people will say, oh, I don't care what the competition is doing. Well, I kind of don't care, but I also want to just be educated, and I think that's just, you know, smart business. Absolutely. So find out what they're charging. And then when we're going to get to in a little bit about the script that you've got to create is you have to know their pricing or, well, and I should say, know what the clients are going to push back about so that you can refute their pricing with yours. Okay, so just like you, you, you said, Angela, and they're like, oh, well, you're the more expensive or you're the expect them to say that but then have an answer for why because again they might not be asking not because they don't want to pay it they might be asking because they just need to understand it the next piece goes to pre-qualifying your clients better because I think there's there's a myth out there that we maybe we don't get as much pushback as you guys get or maybe uh, we don't get our call, you know, our emails not returned or however the best way to say that is. But it happens all the time. And and somebody um, on in one of the questions we got about, you know, how to get the client, like how do you talk to the client when you when you don't give out your prices up front? Well, that's part of your pre qualification process. So so Tara or Tara, when you ask this question, it's a great question, but you you don't give your prices up front saying to them your wedding is going to cost or your event or your you know house staging or whatever business you're in is going to cost X. What you do though is what Angela said, which is you're asking them tons and tons of questions. The best case scenario is that you have somebody on your team at a much lower rate than you 
um, evaluating the customers, right? And asking them all kinds of questions. And then you say, okay, well, our budgets start at X amount. Or we'll say to a client, they'll say, hey, can you do this for, I'm making this up, $3,000 and I'll get a feel for how many people, I can even get that just on my standard intake form. I'll get that and then I'll say no, for, for something of this scope, you're, we're going to start at X dollar amount. So that's really important because they need to know where we're going to start based on a particular project. So you ask a lot of questions, then you quote them a range so that you're pre-qualifying your, your, your clients better. And then Juliana said, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, she said, when you're charging hourly, do you give them a rate or like send them an invoice? How specifically do you tell customers the amount? And that again goes in pre-qualifying your, your clients better. So you pre-qualify them to see if A, are they, are you guys kind of on the same page? You know, is it a, is it a good potential customer for yours that meets your, that, that, that that's your target audience? And then it goes to communicating and walking them through your process. Okay, we take a 50% deposit or, you know, whatever your terms are. We need this signed. We need this done. Boom, boom, boom. And, and then, Angela, explain what you do. You walk them through the process and give us an example of how it goes. Well, again, I really focus on paperless and psychology. And then I show them, I pull up the template that we've made um, through Google Drive. And I ask them, are you familiar with Google Drive? Most people already use it because of college, school, or some people even use it in their work, or they've heard of it, or 99% of people have a Gmail. They just don't know what Google Drive is. And they don't even know that they have access to it. So I pull up the templates and I visually share with them and show them all the tabs and how we keep up with the budget. And I show them the Word document of the timeline so they can already see we have a framework built that will save them time and money on the long in the, in the long run. And then I tell them we share access with you. And once we decide to move forward together, I'll take five minutes and I'll put the apps on your phone, on your computer, on your iPad, show you exactly how to use it. Now, some of our clients love it because they can, they feel that they still have control over everything. And then some of my clients say, Angela, I'm never going to look at that. that. I don't have time for this. This is why I'm hiring you. So then that tells me that person does not need a ton of email communication from me because that's not what they value. They just want me to do it for them and they are paying for the experience of having, having someone else handle it for them. Versus the person that wants to know all the details where I need to communicate with them weekly through email to get, either give them updates or we have a phone call, whatever it takes to make them feel comfortable that things are getting done. That's all that matters. Again, going back to the psychology of making sure you're communicating the message to your client individually. And then we have an amazing pre-qualifying process where on our intake form on our website, it asks very specific questions. And those answers determine what type of phone call um, Allison, who's my right hand in my company, calls and asks them very specific questions on, now you said that your budget was $35,000. Now is that for your entire event? But it says you have 250 people and you want an evening event with a band and a sit down dinner. And, you know, very politely, she'll say, is that your budget for your planner or for your entire event? And some people will say, oh, that's for my whole event. My parents are giving me X amount of dollars. I can't go over that. Well, we know that we cannot help that person because what they're asking for, we cannot meet their expectations. And versus someone who says, well, isn't $35,000 enough money? I mean, I read on the knock.com that that's the national average. Well, that's my client because I can get in there and educate them on what the cost really is based on whatever market they're having an event in because we travel and do destination things too. So again, yeah. you got to pre-qualify and know the questions to ask in order to deliver the response. And also just the questions you ask is also demonstrating your value because obviously you must know what you're talking about if you know how, you know, all the different questions to ask. And just to wrap up this point, Angela, the you were meant, we were talking yesterday, we don't have all the details to hand out on this, but I was super fascinated last night when we were prepping for this. You mentioned um, a video as a way to communicate yeah. your value and kind of close the deal. Tell me about that. So I had someone 
through contact me through LinkedIn to tell me about his company. I get a lot of software people that send me all kinds of apps. They're like, hey, use my app. Check out, check out my app. And I actually thought it was an automated response, which doesn't really catch my attention many times. But I actually clicked on it. And it's a video platform in order to connect with your clients. And his whole thing was, I want to get away from being an automated system to still staying personal and relevant. And because we do build custom events, that's it, it's a perfect platform. And it, it really helps you stand out from your competition. So we were emailing back and forth. And I was asking him a little bit more about the platform. They're a brand new company. And I think that it's a genius idea, especially for people who want to offer a customary product to clients so that right. you can connect with your clients. And so the minute they fill out a form, instead of, you know, yes, we have an automated response for really fast customer service, but maybe the, a day or two later when I have time, I can sit down at my desk and film a quick video that's 30 seconds that says, hey, Alexis, I got your intake form. Thanks so much. I'm excited to learn more about your event that you want to do at the Country Music Hall of Fame. And I'm looking forward to meeting you. Allison's going to be contacting you and I look forward to learning more about your event. Well, and then it gets emailed to them and that's probably going to blow them away. Like, oh my God, that was a really personal message. So we still yeah. want to make people feel good about their personal events. And yeah, and personalization is just a, a key marketing trend no matter what business you're in. And, and one of the things I'm doing here in New York, which you know, but I, I do all these, I kind of come and do all these um, national segments that then get distributed. And one of them was for Leap Year and about business tips for Leap Year that I just did for Fox. So you're getting the inside scoop. And it was about closing the deal by doing, by shooting videos or doing something personal for the client. And I was even saying, hey, listen, even do a GIF, you know, like, or even do uh, one of the, the fast motion videos that you can just do and, like, you know, write it all out of, like, how excited you are to talk to them or don't forget to check out your proposal, that kind of thing. And I just saw, like, you guys love to Google it, I saw a great Remax ad. And, and you, we all have heard the story of, like, why do I need a realtor when I can just sell my house myself? Well, Remax has been trying to address that pushback, okay, because remember I told you, all of us get it. Every industry has pushback. And their pushback is, oh, I could just sell it myself. So what they did was they had an ingenious commercial that I think we should all do, which is it fast-forwarded it and showed all the different things the realtor does from start to finish. And I'll tell you, I saw the video and I was like, damn, A, I don't want to be a realtor. But B, I was like, that is kind of a lot. And then it was like, C, shoot, I'm not going to know how to do all that. So there are a lot of different ways to communicate your value. There are a lot of different ways to uh, – you just have to get creative and, and, of course, be proactive. And the first step is to be on a call like this because this is how you, you learn new tips and tricks. So let's jump to secret four, um, how to stop discounting because you feel bad. And you and I feel very strongly about this. And this is the email that OMG blew up my inbox um, full of venom and hate mail about how insensitive I am towards men because men really do feel bad. Well, I was, the, the point I was trying to make was, hey, listen, it's not that I'm saying men don't feel bad like in life or, I, I mean, yes, I understand that's what the, the subject line said, which was hopefully to get you to read the email. The point was that as women in business, and yes, they work with men, but they don't, they struggle with different things maybe, but this is not typically what they struggle with, which is, is, discounting things and then feeling bad. I cannot think of one guy that I've ever talked to in business who said, oh, I feel so badly that I have to charge this. They, they just, they, they're confident they know what they're worth. I'm not saying that there aren't confident women out there. All I'm saying is that even confident women struggle with this. So the, I think the point on this is that you can't feel bad. It, you know, pushback is part of the process. Angela and I are here to, to help you and to come up with strategies to help you and you've got to have a script we we know you're going to get pushback and that's just how it is but be prepared if you're not if you're listening to this call and you know that you're going to get pushback right we're telling you you're going to every and you probably have even if you haven't started your business you start your business tomorrow I promise you you're going to get pushback, pushback. So you know that, right? So what you've got to do is get off the phone and come up with a script for get off your computer and come up with a script for how are you going to solve, script out that pushback. And because you're going to get it. 
but you have to do that and then then you have to practice and you're I love your point Angela because you're like listen the best way to feel good tell them the best way to feel good well, I was reading some of the, we have some really good questions. Um, I mean, again, the best way to feel good is to know what you need to make in your business to survive, to make it run and to make sure that you are making money. If you don't know that number, you're not going to feel good. And the first 10 plus years I was doing this for fun on the side, I didn't know that number. And then also, um, now that I know the number, when people try to gouge me on pricing, you know, I don't even really say I'm sorry anymore. I say this is the number that it takes for me to operate a business. And and what do you do? You're a dentist. Okay, well, you have to pay for the toothpaste and the instruments and the employees and your office and the upkeep and your software and the text messages that text me to remind me of my dental appointment to get me through the door. You know, just because my job seems fun and pretty and glamorous, I still have to run a business. And so I really try to relate to them and what they do in their industry to make them understand, hey, I'm not feeling bad because I have to operate a business. This is not a charity. Um, otherwise, I would not have a business and I would be out of a job. And then I could go work at Walmart or Chick-fil-A and be a greeter and hand out sauce all day, which there's nothing wrong with that. But right. I, I can't run a business effectively like that. So you, you shouldn't feel bad once you know that number. And then also, you know, yes, have a script and practice it and practice what you offer to them and tell them what you're going to do for them before even getting into the pricing. If somebody asks you how much do you cost and they're not going to give you five minutes of their time, which both of your time is valuable, I don't want to work with you. If you're not going to tell me how I can help you first, then we don't need to go any further. Um, and then after an event is over and you've spent 280 hours and you've paid 15 people and you've paid all your overhead and then you feel like you've been hit by a train the next day and you can't walk and barely go to the gym, you know you've at least made some money off the event and that your time away from your family and your friends and your daily life was well spent and being profitable. Otherwise, if you're not, you end up hating your clients, you start right. hating your job that was supposed to be your passion, and then you just go work for somebody else because you throw in the towel. Right. And, yeah, and, the, and but it goes back to you have to know those numbers. You have to know. So let's kind of put this whole call together. Because we, we've talked about a lot of different things, and I know we're still getting questions, and we're going to try to flow through this so we can keep um, answering questions at the end, is this is a process, and it's about creating a system. And when you have a system, and you've done your homework, you know what the competition charges and why they charge it, and then you know what your pushback is going to get from your potential customers about, you know, being too expensive because it's like if all you get to do is push back and you're going to get a discount like why wouldn't you right so then you get you have more time why do you have more time because guess what you're not going to end up working with everybody which is fine you don't want to work with everybody like I keep coming back to you do not want to have a hundred percent closing rate because something is wrong and then you work less but you make more money yes really you do but it goes it boils down to working on your business not just in it which is which is obviously what we're doing on these calls and it's kind of like this like I, I, instead of doing a case study for this webinar I decided we we're going to do a case study on ourselves and the way that I used to do it was I literally would pay my clients to work with me and at the end of the day because I put so much time in and I hadn't charged them enough and then what happened exactly what Angel said which is that you get bitter and now, I mean, I was I was tallying it up for something. You know, I've sold over twenty million dollars in events and food, and I mean, when you when you add it up, and not to mention all the the consulting clients that I've had when I've helped them up their sales. So I now know how to price, right? But it, it took a really long time. But it also took a long time, and it also took doing it wrong. So if you've been doing it wrong, that's part of the process. But then one day I just got tired of my own story and I just said, listen, I can't do this anymore. And 
that I think is, is kind of what we're talking about right now is, is do a little bit more work on the front end. And Angela, you, you mentioned, you talked about your coach sat in you, sitting you down and, and really walking you through those numbers. And I think your piece is now you've, you've seen the numbers. Like I think you have to experience it and see it and know it in black and white in order to say no because you very confidently are like, yeah, get, guess what? Knock yourself out. Bye-bye. Uh, Go get yourself another planner. And I do the same thing all the time. I cannot tell you how many jobs I, I, I turn down. Even people are like, but I really want to work with you. And I'm like, I would love to work with you, but we're not a you know, we're not a match. Because I I know that in the end you won't be happy with me because I can't provide you the level of service that you're telling me you need at my prices. And as long as the demand is there, which it is because I know what my customers want, of course we're having a fire alarm, then <laughs> this is classic. Uh, of course, I'm <laughs> I don't know what to do. Um, we'll just keep going here and hope it stops. Uh, I was going to say maybe I could go in the closet, but I think that defeats the purpose. Um, Angela, I might have you kind of jump in with this if this doesn't oh, sure. stop. But um, you're fine saying no, and let's let's kind of walk through the next piece so I can mute myself and hope this goes away. So jump in. Absolutely. So, I mean, again, to get a lot of people that I work with, they don't really understand how to get to that number of how much. They're like, well, how do you know that you need to charge $150 an hour or $200 an hour? Well, it's it, to me, it's very simple. I sit down and I say, okay, our office costs this much. Our internet, our car, our gas. I pay 13 people on payroll. This is how much they make each month. Um you know, we, we pay for our website and our computer software and our updates. And until you really start to list it out, like in, in a simple Excel spreadsheet, um, you really don't know what your expenses are. And so you can really start very easily listing it out. And a lot of planners I work with, they're like, well, I don't have any overhead. I work from home. I'm like, no, you have a car, you put gas in it, you have a computer, you probably pay for lunches or dinners when you take clients out. So you've got to factor all that in and then also figure out how much money you have to make yourself to live because not all of us are married and not all of us have another household income. So how are you going to take care of you? And if you do have a family, what do you have to make to make sure that you're making an appropriate amount of money? And you know what? Some of the people I work with, they track it for a year and they, they are not profitable and they say, can I come work with you or I want to work for another company because I'm really creative and I love planning and doing design for people, but I'm not a business person and I don't want to be. And that's okay too. It may help you figure it out. But wouldn't you rather spend a year of your life doing that than spending five years of your life trying to do it the hard way and figuring it out? So again, I would identify three things that make you unique and figure out what do you need that number to be so that you can commit to changing it and at least know how you're going to change your year or your season going forward. So you're not a rat running around in a circle over and over. Okay. I love it. I'm, it just stopped. Oh my God. Help me. Yeah. Uh, got to love that. And then I was sitting here going, I'm so glad that I'm waiting for this to stop, but like what if there really is fire? I love how we just now assume that oh, there's no fire, no problem. Okay, so I think at the end of the day, just continue here, you, you have to decide what you want. Anthony Robbins has a great thing about, you know, we'll do more to avoid pain than we will to gain pleasure. And I think the key is is really to put enough pain, like you said, Angela, when you saw that number, then when you get your hourly rate and you walk through this with a coach or with somebody, you get kind of sick and you don't want to do it anymore. And then you have all the time that you want to, to, to do other things. I mean, I remember I was thinking back today, I was like, God, this is awesome because I'm in New York and I'm not totally stressed out. Whereas on so many trips in previous years, I would be torn in so many different directions, but I, you know, I'm just in a different spot in my business. I'm able to run things differently, and hopefully, everybody, with the exception of the fire drill, would agree that so far we've gone through. You know, this has been a good last hour. Hopefully, you got some tips and tricks. 
we of course can't cover everything that that you want and and even if we had all day because it's taken us so long to learn but we we always promise you that we'll give you a way for those of you who are like I am fed up I can't do this anymore um, we're going to give you a way to have us help you and again this is from feedback from past webinars what we decided to do is we know that the old habits die hard and the feedback that we have been getting from you guys is that it's hard to do it yourself right and so if you do want to fix it because we keep coming back to oh my gosh it, it you know it's a lot to fix somebody's pricing and so how do how do you do it and how can we do it and not be making a dollar an hour as much as we'd love to work with you and um, then the, the question is how can we do it so we think this time we have a, a, a good way and if you're open to change and and you've decided you're just done let's let's hit it so what we decided was this time we were going to put together something that was a total no-brainer for every single person so what you're going to get is if you decide that you want to take it to the next level is we created this business evaluation that really gives you a deep dive into your ideal customer your market your pricing strategy it asks you tons and tons of questions so by the time you talk to us, you are on fire in terms of you've really looked at your business because there's no way you can do this without looking at the numbers in your business. And that, and then we we that alone is a $397 value. Then we decided we we're gonna give you a therapy session <laughs> with Angela, and where she really goes over all of your toughest challenges. So, so, so some people said, listen, I, I just can't do this by myself. Like I know you say write a script. I know you say handle the objections, but you're having trouble sitting there at your desk doing it on your own. So we said, okay, fine. Let's create this evaluation. Let's have the, you guys do this evaluation and then let's dig in. And you get to spend that time just doing it, just you and Angela, nobody else. And so we gave that a $997 value. It's probably a $2 million value. But in, in the therapy, it, would, it, it is every time I talk to you. Yeah. Um, in the therapy session, what you're going to do with Angela is you're going to come up with the top three pricing challenges because that is in each of your, in your feedback, you've said, I, how do I know what to do for my market? How do I know if I should charge hourly? Heather had a great question and she said, how can, you know, do you ever have trouble with collections? She's a former lawyer. Like, you know, when the, when the money runs out, what if they, you know, do, do you, how do you get paid? Well, of course, you're billing them constantly, and it, if the money runs out, uh, you know, you're billing them every two weeks, basically. So if the money stops, you stop, and, and they are very nervous about that. So you, everybody's got to hit their the deadlines, and but the key is that that's clearly communicated. So... Let's say Heather was, was working with us on this program. The, what you would do is figure out, okay, listen, if that's one of the things you're worried about, how do you make sure that that doesn't happen? And then that also goes back to, thank God you're a lawyer, because then that goes back to your proposal and, and your payment terms and what happens if you don't meet them. The next thing is, is that you really set up your pricing so you feel good. So we talked about that hourly rate, and we talked about what your goal rate is. And then figuring out what are your top three client objections because the, the objections I get might be different than the ones you get, right? You might be in a, in a, well, you are in a different market and maybe it's not as sophisticated or it's more sophisticated. And then what to do when the competition keeps undercutting you. So it basically drills down on all the key things that people are struggling with, but this time we like hold your hand and do it with you. So we know this works because obviously it's worked to the tune for me of more than $20 million in event and food and, and consulting sales and it certainly has worked for Angela with all of her events and, and TV stuff. And at the end of the day, with, with this webinar or with anything else, it goes back to that marketer that I whose email I, I loved and I wish I would thought of it myself, which is like, what are you going to do? You've only got two choices, right? So. You can do nothing or you can do something. And what I have found is that people that don't take the time to actually work on their pricing just decide, I've had it, I'm going to do it. Then what happens is they're in the same spot six months later. And so you can just 
do the race to the bottom and let everybody undercut you. Or you can actually invest a little bit of time and a little bit and figure it out. And we have some amazing testimonials that you can definitely see. And, and one of them is the whole Stacy Jelly from the Bridal Dish who loves Angela and thinks she's passionate and smart and she's changed the way she does business. And I've got the same thing in terms of, you know, I worked with this one of my favorite girls, Nicole Lachi, who is a personal stylist and she was it was the same thing. She's like, I can't get my foot in the door. I can't get my foot in the door. Even though she'd been in business for a while, she just couldn't drill down on getting that extra business. But then we just tweaked how she communicated her pricing. She actually raised her prices, but she just communicated it differently. And that's sort of the message. So the value of all this is, let's say, $1,394. And the but we knew that we're not going to charge you $1,394. So we also wanted to give you a bonus, uh, which is my whole, like, you know, I talk about my pricing and how I had to figure it out. Well, we have a 100-page workbook that literally walks you through every single thing about how to price. And it is, to this day, exactly how I price. Like, I talked to you about how I'm starting this new piece and exactly how I started and exactly how I price right now is I track my time, I put it into a formula, I track all my cost of goods sold. If you don't know what cost of goods sold are, you really need this. The thing is is that that obviously since this is one-on-one, -on -one, we can only give this bonus and give this to the first 20 people. So you guys will know when you sign up if you're if it goes through, guess what? You're one of the first 20 people. Uh, and so to do that, you get your business analysis, 397, you get your therapy session for 997, and you get this bonus pricing workbook, so that's 797. So you're at $2,191. And the question it basically is, you have to look at it as how much, what's a new client worth? Like what is it worth for you to not stress out? What is it worth for you to be able to say no to a client and actually feel good about it because in when I saw the feedback of the questions there seemed to be a lot of pain attached to the whole process and it's like if you could finally learn once and for all how to do it and then by the way you can do it for the rest of your life to me that's like teach it's not just giving somebody a fish it's literally showing them how to do it so how much at the end of the day is one client worth and how much is one client worth? I mean, that's that's what it boils down to. But if you get one client or charge more to one client, how much is that worth? So we get thousands and thousands of dollars for one-on-one -on -one coaching, but we don't want to do that. Now, yes, if you... Oh, you good news. Um, well, I'm going to keep... I'm going to keep... <laughs> this is hilarious. I'm glad it's a false alarm. Um, so we did, so like for example, Nicole did one, so we changed her pricing and she got one client a month and that was 1200 bucks. But then she had four clients a month at 1200 bucks. So it was $4,800 a month for just one month of going through this. So if we were charging anybody else, we'd just say, okay, listen, if we weren't, if you hadn't signed up for the webinar, we'd say, listen, let's do this for $1,097. We'll discount a little bit. But what we decided is that if you anybody who goes to the profitgoddess.com slash get Angela, say because you want Angela, the profitgoddess.com slash get Angela. And if one of you guys would do me a favor and check out the URL uh, to just make sure if somebody could just tell me in the chat that it's working, that'd be great. It's the profitgoddess.com slash get Angela. And what we decided is we're gonna do this for all you do is give us your credit card for $127 today. And your credit card is charged in 30 days, another $127. That is it. And you get this whole package. So what we decided was this was the easiest way that we could work with you at the absolute lowest investment possible and 127 bucks. In 30 days, you have another 127. So you have two options, do nothing and then be back on these calls and I don't mean to sound harsh, but you've got to commit to changing it. And if you if you have another way to change it, like by all means, go do it. But 
you've got to commit to changing it. So those are your two options. So if you, the other thing too is remember, we have a 30-day guarantee. So your money back. So if you do this, you're not happy, and we do not care if it's 29 days, 23 hours, 59 minutes from now, we will give you your money back. Just be like, okay, it didn't work, I didn't like it, I didn't like you, no problem, your money's back. So all you have to do is go to theprofitgoddess.com slash get Angela. So the real question is, is it worth gambling a few minutes of your time to check this out? Um, I would say it is because you get your money back if you don't like it. And what if it does even half of what we were saying today it's going to do? I mean, 127 bucks times two. So I love it. Miranda said it works. Poor Miranda has listened to me preach about pricing and productivity way more times than she'd like to. So there are a ton of opportunities that are going to pass you by, but the end of the day, you really want more time for what it is you want to do. And you can continue being stressed out. Believe me, I was there for a very long time and very resistant. Or you can actually do something about it. So go to theprofitgoddess.com slash getangela and check it out. And um, somebody said, are you going to get a copy of the slides? Yes, you will get a copy of the slides and a copy of the audio. And... That will go out probably tomorrow, assuming we don't have any audio issues. Sometimes we do. And let's see. Oh, somebody's asking me, what is the URL again? The URL is www.theprofitgoddess.com and slash get Angela. I love that it works. Miranda, it, the link works and the whole process works. Okay, and Heather, Miss Heather... And then you signed up. Um, so oh, quite, this is a great question. Somebody signed up for the last the last piece. Does this include this? Um, if you did sign up, if you signed up in the past, what you're going to get is you're going to get more time. So your um, you will have done the evaluation piece, and you can just shoot us an email. And I mean, you can redo the evaluation piece if you want, but you would just get more one on one time. So. If I were you, Miss Heather, um, it's kind of a great bang for the buck because you can decide to set up your your one-on-one -on -one time back to back. So it's almost like having a little pricing, I don't know, summit. Um, or you can set the call separately. So that's a great question. It's a great thing to take advantage of because Angela and I um, really don't even do hourly stuff for the most part. We just do things in packages. So okay. I think we got to all the questions. Angela, what else? I think we answered. Anything else you want to conclude with? I was trying to answer some of the questions in the in the box, and a couple of people gave me their emails. They asked for our past webinars and if we had a library of webinars. So I'll follow up with you guys on that. And thanks so much for your time, and thanks for listening. We're here to help. I love it. And um, – do we need a promo call? Miranda wants to know if we need a promo call. Um, I don't know what you mean by do we need a promo call. Um, oh, yeah. If she means like promo. Oh, promo code. Oh, no, you don't oh. need a promo code because nobody knows about this link unless you were on this call. We just made the link live. So right. all you do is you go to theprofitgoddess.com slash gettingangela. $127 um, today. And then... And you get the bonus. And as I say, if, if you're not one of the first 20, it'll shut off. So you will know. And then, yeah, you don't need a promo code because you guys are the only ones that, that have it. And um, so Cindy, Cindy said that. Okay, wait a second. Somebody said they got a message that said no results found. Okay, let's try it again. Go to, would you guys try somebody, maybe Miranda, www.theprofitgoddess. Make sure you're spelling goddess right. That could be it. G O D D E S S dot com forward slash get Angela. And also spelling profit right because people get confused because my last name has two S and two T's. Oh, yeah. So let's just start from the beginning. <laughs> www dot T H E the profit P R O F I T goddess G O D D E S S dot com 
forward slash get G-E-T, Angela, A-N-G-E-L-A. If somebody can try it, Miss Miranda, I know you're in front of a computer. It seems like if you haven't jumped off the call. Um, let us know. So the first 20 people get this, and we're excited. I don't want to get off until somebody tells me it's worked. Oh, yay, Amanda, or Miranda signed up. The capital letters make a difference, Amory Buckley said. Okay, so capital T for the capital profit, capital goddess.com, capital get, Angela. So the profit goddess.com, in fact, you know what? Why didn't I think of this before? Lord have mercy. I'm just going to put it in the chat. God, why didn't I think of that before? Must be the fire alarm. How's that? Send to all. There you go. Okay. Thank you for being on the call. Oh, yay. China signed up. Oh, my God. Okay, well, now I should probably, I hope it doesn't work because we're already going to have our 20 people. Okay, well, we love doing this with you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, the one thing that I, I did promise that we would talk about the whole email debacle, which we did, you know, earlier. But I do want to just say that the one thing that I learned to reinforce all this is that not everybody is your target audience. And it boils down to when you work with people, I mean, I, I got so much fan mail after that to say, hey, you know, don't worry, that I realized, wow, there's a huge audience out there that does like what I have to say and, and the people that are not thrilled with it, that's okay. That's kind of the point. And you guys should be in the repel or attracting marketing department too. I'm not saying slay people like evidently I did, but it really did teach me that You've got to speak to one audience, and you can't be something to everybody. And if, if somebody's offended, sorry. Um, I really am sorry. But that doesn't mean that you know I can totally stop what I'm doing because there are a lot of people for whom all this works, evidently. All right, everybody have a great rest of the day. Angela, thank you for this. Sorry for the fire alarm, but, you know, keeps it exciting, That's right? Nice. <laughs> God bless America. Okay, Cindy is saying she's copying and pasting the link and it's still not working. Okay, bless you, Cindy. I'm going to try it one more time. Maybe try one of our... I tried yeah. Chrome, Safari, and then Firefox. Sometimes, um, I don't know if you refresh the browser, it has something to do with cookies. But I don't know if you use a different browser. I sh but it worked in mine for both of those. Yeah, I don't know. We've got people that are, I can see the orders going through, so we've got people that are signing up. So, Cindy, if you have any, um, if you if you still can't figure it out, Cindy, um, I don't want to give out my personal email on this, but you just email info, I-N-F-O, at thepartygoddess.com, G-O-D-D-E-S-S.com, and um, in fact, let me put that in the chat. If you have any issues or have questions, here you go, email, and then uh, I will... We'll see it and we will help you out. But Cindy, if you want to do it, we will honor it no matter what, even if we're past the 20 people. Okay, so if you want to do it, jump in, sign up. We're super excited. Thank you guys for doing this. Angela, thank you and thanks for bearing with it. Thanks. Okay, have a great rest of the day. Bye, everybody. Bye.